What's up everybody, this is Fred Bracciani of TSC. In this interview, we chat with director Nathan Sobani, the man behind the international sci-fi thriller, Guidance. We long to be loved, to understand and to be understood. And Guidance can help you to truly connect with people. Guidance is powered by a simple yet powerful engine. Truth. From Gideon Well, Nason, thank you so much for joining us. As we saw in the trailer at the top of the show, Guidance, sci-fi thriller filmed in China, finally getting a worldwide release June 17th. Can you tell us how you came up with this concept? You no, know, the concept, uh, well, first, very nice meeting you. Um, and yeah, thanks for having me on. I think, you know, the concept was something that was uh, something that's been bubbling in my mind for a long time, maybe seven, eight, nine years. And so... Um, I had started writing another uh, screenplay. This this other one I was writing maybe six, seven years ago, I started, was uh, very much a hard sci-fi um, uh, kind of project, whereas this one is more soft, you know, or social sci-fi, I would call it. Mm -hmm. And in that one, this concept was in there among many, many other things. And so, but I felt uh, as time went on, I was working on that. I felt that this particular idea deserved its own treatment. So uh, I removed it out of the other one. I was very relieved once I removed it out of the other story, the other story just kind of was able to breathe a bit, you know, um, you can, you can't have too many flowers in one garden. I think it's good, you know, so taking, a, taking this out was great for that story. And, and then we we're able to focus on some really minutia points in this one by just using just this one, one thing. And one thing aesthetically I liked about the film, there were different parts where it was 16 by nine, the usual widescreen mm. format, and then, and then four by three. I'm assuming that was deliberate. What gave you that idea? That was very much deliberate. In fact, um, you know, we, we planned that a, a long time before shooting. Um, and really the idea behind it was to, was to have the visual as always as it should be, uh, supplement the storytelling and, you know, push the story along. And so this was very much a story decision because if, I don't know if you'll notice, but in the four, three, you know, the ones, the box, uh, first of all, that was shot in RELF and those, that was, uh, that's the way that camera shoots. So once we did that, there was no going back. Um, so in those uh, scenes, you'll see the main couple together. And in my mind, I felt like we need to have them squished a little bit more to kind of illustrate their emotional closeness or what I want the audience to feel um, viscerally, you know, and then the, the, the two, three, nine aspect ratio shots um, for the most part uh, have a dual purpose. One, you see the, the other couple, the X, uh, the X couple. Uh, and I wanted to demonstrate the opposite, their emotional distance. <laughs> uh, and so it also serves as helping us to understand the timelines. So there's, you know, present and, and past. So that also helps with that too, as a bonus. Now, from what I understand, this was filmed in China. You cast the Chinese actors. You've, you're Iranian, but you've lived in North America and you lived in Asia. Of course, in China, 
Can you tell us a little about how this all came about as far as like your filmmaking career? Because this is like a very unique journey compared to a lot of directors we've interviewed. Very unusual uh, journey. Uh, but, you know, I think there's a lot of us uh, that are that are kind of like this coming up, uh, you know, um, uh, diaspora filmmakers, I guess you can call them, you know, um, filmmakers who were born in one place or you know, they call them also third culture kids or whatever. Um, but then can't, I can't really go back to my home country where I was, where I was born and spent the first few years of my life. I, I'm not particularly welcome there um, for, uh, for obvious reasons. And so, which is Iran, um, and it would not be a very safe thing to do. But at the same time, we'd have to, we had to just travel a, a few countries uh, around Southeast Asia and then eventually North America because of, as immigrants and refugees. Um, and then I think I just kind of got used to that and then, um, moved to China maybe a dozen years ago. Um, and, uh, I mean, you know, I wanted to work on my craft. I, I wanted to tell stories, um, I, you know, and so what am I supposed to do? So I just do it in the place where I'm at, you know? So it wasn't very much like, Oh, this is the way I'm going to plan my life out. It just all happened. And then you just do what you got to do. And it happens to be where you are. <laughs> and, um, so, but then when you look back on it, the way you described it, it does look a little, little odd, I guess, a little out, out of the, um, out, out of the box. I mean, especially when you're trying to do more experimental or art kind of related type of films, you know, most people are used to, for example, um, let's use a uh, Indian, let's say like there's an Indian filmmaker born and raised in India makes a film about in India about Indians and, you know, and there's authenticity to that. Um, but what do you do with people like us who are kind of just roaming the earth and don't really, you know, so I think there's a place for, for, for these kinds of storytellers where we're able to tell stories in a slightly different way and slightly different light and have it still be authentic to who we are. So that's what I think what we're really trying to, um, trying to achieve, trying to aim for here, you know, achievement. That's not up to me to say, but yeah. Was it tough at all with the casting process or anything? Was there any kind of language barrier or, or what did it go pretty smoothly once you kind of figured like who you wanted to cast? Yeah, that went very smoothly. Again, this, we're very blessed in many ways. We were able to get, uh, um, I think the perfect people for the roles. Um, and it, it was just a casting call. They went out and um, our, one of our, uh, producers, our creative producer um, is Khalil Fong, who's very well known in Asia um, uh, as a as an art, kind of an R and B Mandarin pop um, recording artist, uh, singer songwriter, and so because I was our executive producer, we were able to that opened some doors for us. So when we put a casting call out, people took it more seriously. So that was great, <laughs> um, and so uh, we had some. You know, it's a wonderful um, kind of, yeah, w w wonderful actors come forward. And I think we ended up with with the, the three three perfect ones. And, and in terms of independent cinema, like how would you rate like the whole industry right now in, in, in China? Indie filmmaking is alive and well. And, and I think doing, doing well there, it, even though it has very big challenges ahead of it, um, and it's it's getting tougher and tougher. Censorship is getting tougher and tougher, but people are persevering. I think the thing you don't people don't realize when it comes to filmmaking, maybe actually maybe people do know this, but filmmakers are literally very, they're crazy. They're crazy people. Like you gotta be crazy in some way or another. You have to be a little bit. Actually, I haven't spent too much time in North America. I don't know if you're allowed to say these th these words anymore, but you got to be a little bit. I don't know if you can say crazy, but you know what I mean. Like you, 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 you can't be thinking straight if you want to go into indie filmmaking because it's it, it, there's the odds are stacked up against you, and that's just, it's true in China as well. So they really do it because they're driven by some internal. We all do it. We're driven by some internal um, uh, motivation that's just pushing us to do something that doesn't make any sense uh, other than you get some sort of incredible uh, 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 reward from it that, that is usually not financial. So, so, um, so they're persevering, you know, places like, like Iran, which is, uh, you know, different story altogether. You have some incredible films coming out from there uh, that, 
the world has been able to see in the past, you know, 20, 30 years during an oppressive regime there. So, um, uh, so I, I think filmmaking and filmmakers in the filmmaking, uh, no matter what, they find a way to kind of tell their stories. It's just the human spirit. It's just, they manage to do it somehow. So, um, uh, China has this, has compared to the rest of North America, I guess. Um, yeah, it has its own challenges, uh, but it has its own incredible adv advantages. You know, um, I don't know if I was would be able to make this type of film in North America, really, honestly. So I'm incredibly grateful for the opportunity to do it over there as a, as a guest. You know, even though I've been there a dozen years, but but yeah. Are you primarily looking to continue just working in in China now that? You have this worldwide distribution. Are you are you looking to come over to the states or, or Europe or, or do any kind of projects outside of China? I'm working on a, a series, uh, eight episodic series that is based on the same concept as the film, actually, and where we explore brand new stories in the same that takes place in the same universe as the film. So that is actually geared toward a international audience, and it will have an international cast, um, most likely English. Uh, so, so yeah, that's the, that's the next step. That's the next step to kind of migrate over, try that, try that over, over in the, in North America, if you will. Um, and, uh, and see, and see where that goes. Were there any major challenges that you had to face these last couple of years as a filmmaker? Our post was, was all done in the pandemic at a time when, uh, you know, the post-production, uh, when things were not that uh, great in China. They're actually not that great right now. They're going through another resurgence of the virus, but back in um, late, uh, what was it? Uh, early, yeah, uh, kind of the first March, April-ish of 2021 is when we started going into post and you know things were shut down. We couldn't go to the, couldn't go to the post house, couldn't go to the VFX studio. You know, it was just, you know, so, so it was very challenging, um, but then again, I'm, I'm really grateful that we're able to shoot just before the pandemic started. So, you know, in other ways, the pandemic was kind of helpful because, you know, when it came to the regulators and approving the 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 the, the first cut and approving this and approving that to pass censorship, they were a little bit more chilled out about things. Oh, it's pandemic. Okay, the, the industry is taking a toll okay, you're good. You're good to go. This You've passed this round, you know? So, you know, it had, a, again, <laughs> it was advantages and disadvantages. Yeah, for sure. You've made a, a number of short films. You, you did a music video. I, if I'm not mistaken, this is your first feature film? Mm -hmm. for first any, feature. Awesome. So for any filmmakers uh, or aspiring filmmakers watching, listening to this that are wondering, oh man, okay, I've done some short films. I may have done a music video. How do I, how the hell do I go from that to a feature? What advice would you give them? You know, the advice that I got, which I really didn't like at the time, actually, it really uh, kind of um, irritated me, but ended up being true. First of all, be, have an open mind, because when they told me this advice, even though I was irritated when I heard it, um, there's that part of you in the back of your brain going, you know, this kind of makes sense. Just to have an open mind, which was basically, um, I was told, stop writing um, screenplays as fun as it is and as great as it is with that are such huge budget films i mean you know if you want to get your stories out there write something that's contained that is doable you know and then if you can limit yourself in that way that limitation will actually bring out more creative uh creative kind of uh, fodder and juices out so um uh, that's and that's that's kind of what I did with this feature. We make sure it's a contained drama, kept the costs uh, very low, um, and in every which way possible uh, to give it a shot for being made. And I'm very much of the Werner Herzog school of thought, where uh, I, I just feel like, you know, if you've got a story and you can't you can't bear to just keep it inside, you just go out find a way to shoot it. Like he says. Uh, you know, uh, go drive a cab for two, three weeks, make enough money, shoot one scene, and then go back and work as a bouncer, do something, make some more, then shoot the next scene. You, know, you, you have to feel compelled to do that. And so that's essentially what we did. We just 
which literally as each phase of the project went along, I didn't have, no one knows this. I didn't have enough to cover the next phase, but we just did it. And just we were a bunch of charlatans actually. And just, it just kind of fed each other. And, um, and you can write a story just about that. And, 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 you know, people could see things are happening and then we're able to get more investment, you know, literally the day, the day we start the first day of shooting, we still didn't have everything we needed. We weren't able to, to make, um, to make our expenses uh, a midway through, but then, you know, action begets things happen if you take action. And so, because we did that and I was like, you know, in between the scene, I'm like shooting off emails and pictures of the scene. Hey, we look at this, but you know, oh, we still need some more. <laughs> you know, and then you know, the, it, it all worked out. Definitely all worked out. June 17th, Guidance released worldwide video on demand. 